Hey everyone, Spencer Hawes here and welcome back to the show. Uh, let's imagine that you decide to buy a site. You're just getting started building niche websites online and you decided to buy a small site for $2,000. And before you know it, that site after about seven months is making $6,800. And not only that, but you happen to have bought a second website around the same time that was even less expensive, was making less money, and now it's making almost $5,000 a month. So that's exactly what happened with Yao Yao Shea, who is on the podcast today, and he shares his story. He talks about two specific sites that he purchased in uh, around the middle of 2020. I think it was May 2020. And now by the end of the year of 2020, December, those two sites combined made over $10,000 a month. It really is incredible. And he, even he knows that it's kind of lightning has struck twice for him. But I wanted to bring him on the show because it's really interesting. I want to hear how somebody can do that. And so we talk about where he bought the site, which one of them he bought on motioninvest.com, got a great deal there. And then he found a second site on the flipping websites Facebook group. And we dive into all of the on-page strategies that he followed, including internal linking using Link Whisper, and then adding new content and how he looked at specific keywords and what he should be adding. And then we talk about link building as well. And overall, it's just a really interesting story, I think. And hopefully you will find it motivational in a way uh, as you look at your own sites and perhaps even think about buying a site yourself. Uh, or if you're just trying to build a portfolio and already have some sites, maybe there's a few things that Yao Yao shares here that you can go and apply into your own business. Now, if you want to follow along with Yao Yao, you can go to yaoyao.com, and that is actually spelled Y-O-Y-A-O.com. If you go there, he shares his income reports. He shares exactly how much uh, all of his sites are making and a few more details that we couldn't go into here uh, during the interview. So with that, here's the show. Hey, Yao Yao, welcome to the Niche Pursuits hey. podcast. Hey, thanks, Spencer. Yep. Love, thanks for having me here. Love it. Thank you. Yeah, it's great to have you on the show. Um, we connected through my Facebook group, the Niche Pursuits uh, Facebook group. Yep. And uh, I think it was a previous podcast episode, actually, I posted. And uh, it was somebody that had been, um, you know, that had bought a site and grew a site. And then sort of in the comments, uh, you had made mention that you had a site that you had bought and had done pretty well. And you shared some of the numbers. I was like, whoa, okay. Uh, sounds like another interesting success story here. So <laughs> Why don't we have you on the podcast and you can share your story as well? So that's that's kind of how we connected um, to, to get here to be on the podcast. But to introduce yourself to listeners that don't know who you are, um, why don't you just give us a little bit of your background, maybe your professional background, what you've been up to? Yeah, so um, my background has been mostly in the software industry and then, and then in the, um, and then in entertainment as well. Um, so I, in college, I was studying, uh, CS computer science. Right. And, right. and then I fell into acting and moved oh, really? to LA after graduation. Yep. Um, wow. so if you, you know, if you Google me, you know, or search for me on IMDb, you'll find what I've been in and stuff like that. And then I've also been in a bunch of indies and, and smaller stuff. Um, and then it was, you know, I moved to LA to pursue acting and then got behind the scenes, started doing more production work um, as well. And eventually moved to China about 11 years ago. Okay. And to pursue entertainment industry there. And oh, wow was doing a little acting, got more behind the scenes, um, got more into the production side of things and started producing stuff. And up until the, the mid to 2020, um, when, I, when I stopped working at, at a company in China, 
and the whole pandemic hit and everything. And it was, you know, it came back to Taiwan. So I'm in Taiwan now. Mm -hmm. Came back to Taiwan beginning of 2020 for Chinese New Year's. And with the pandemic and everything, we just didn't want to go back to China, right? Because it was the epicenter. Of it, of it all back in January right. 2020, right? So we uh, we just stayed out here. But luckily, you know, the the job I was doing and the project, uh, the film project I was on, um, a lot of the the director and um, some of the artists, a lot of all the artists at the time, and um, were in Los Angeles, at, you know. So I was able to work remotely because um, it was remote work anyways from China. So how many yeah. years were you involved in acting and production work, sort of the, the film industry? Since 99. Wow. So it, yeah, so it was a, it's a long time. Yeah. So 20, 20 years. Wow. Years. Okay. Yeah. So you've uh, had quite and, a few little acting gigs and now it, it yeah. mostly you're doing more production behind the scenes stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, and so throughout, throughout all that, you know, when I was in LA, I was still, you know, still very technically minded. Right. Um, so I, I still, I love, I, you know, in high school, I was making websites, um, HTML it was, it was, um, I, I did a lot of that. That's why I went to school for it and, and CS. Um, and then, and then, you know, why I was in, LA instead of um, well I did that too I, I waited tables I bartended but then I, I also fell into a, a a gig with a startup where I was you know I started out doing some quality assurance QA work on their software and then eventually just moved up the chain um, and, and you know, it was, it was great because it was flexible. They were, they were really cool with my act, my whole acting thing and auditions and everything. Um, so I, I stayed, I stuck around, you know, there was always the tech side of things as well. I was always, um, you know, building websites here and there, whether it was for myself or, or just for friends or just to mess around. And, and you know, finally, I guess in the last couple of years, I started thinking, you know, I want to jump on the um, the whole passive income train, you know, and, and see what what there is online, mm -hmm. what what kind of online businesses I can get into, you know. Um, so that's how I came into the whole online business world. All right. So let let's um, sort of dig into that a little bit. Um, so you yeah. dabbled in high school building websites. You've done a few things on the technical side through your your work. Um, what was the first dollar and how did you make the first dollar online, uh, for yourself? Online, it must've been a couple of years ago or no, a year ago. Um, well, it's 2020. So 2019, about around fall, winter 2019, that's when I started getting into really getting into it and trying to figure something out, um, in terms of an online business. And so I got into drop shipping, right? I was like, all right, this is, okay. you know, I can make some easy money and quick money and throw up some Facebook ads and then people click and then people go to the, my Shopify store and right. then, uh, cause they were really easy to set up and you know, and then I start making money. Um, and you can ship somebody else's product or somebody else yeah, ships the product, exactly. right? Someone else ships it for me, you know, straight from China. And, and, and where were you and, finding the products? Was it like AliExpress or Alibaba or did you like have official distributors or something like that? No, no, I never got to down to that route. I was testing it out with AliExpress first. Okay. Um, and so there were, there were like a couple of plugins you could do where you could, you know, connect it straight from your store to an AliExpress store. And so that's what I did. Um, and then I figured, okay, if these products really sell really well, then I'm already in China. I could just fly south to, to like Guangzhou or some Shenzhen where most of the products are manufactured mm -hmm. and find a, you know, find a manufacturer and then find a supplier and everything and then get a, get things cheaper, right. Get products cheaper. Um, and you know, it was, it wasn't as easy, obviously. Um, it's never that easy, right? Sure. <laughs> um, 
but I eventually started breaking even. And then I started, um, making a little bit of money profit every day, um, okay. from, you know, the, the, the sales versus the Facebook ad costs, right. Mm -hmm. And the, the Shopify costs and everything. Um, and then my Facebook account got shut down. Um, oh, no. with all those ad accounts and everything. And I think it, part of it was because I was in China. So I was on VPN all the time. And with the VPN I was on, it would, what it would do is it would just shut off and then reconnect to another location somewhere else. And so okay. I was constantly jumping from the U S to Singapore, to Japan, to Taiwan, to whatever country they connected so me to. So it looked a little bit suspicious from Facebook's end. Yeah. Yeah. So I That's got rough. suspicious activity, you know, notice. Um, and the first time I was able to get it back. And then a couple of weeks later, they did it to me again. And I was never able to get it back. And so, you know, that was rough. That was the end of dropshipping for me um, because you need a Facebook ad account. Right. You know? Right. Um, I, I, I tried creating, I tried getting new phone numbers uh, to try and email addresses to try to do all that, but they, they just kept shutting it down. Um, and then finally I, I figured, okay, it must be some Facebook facial recognition AI or something, right? Because I'm putting photos of myself, but then I'm also adding people that like my wife and, and my family and friends. And so they must have seen a certain pattern, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know if they're that there, they have to be some, I don't know. They, I don't know what they were doing. Um, unless they were cutting through the, the VPN I was using. And so I just couldn't get one that, that, that stuck. You right. know? I was finally able to get one, a, a really old one, an old account I actually had uh, for one of my startup businesses yeah. um, way back when. Uh, but it, 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 I was able to use that. And so that's what I'm using now. Yeah. So that's tough. I mean, you, you figure out how to make a little bit of money from drop shipping, even though it's not a lot, you're starting to get ads that are profitable and then Facebook comes in with the hammer yep. <laughs> and just completely shuts you down. I mean, that's, that's rough. Right. And so where do you go from there? I mean, even though, I mean, it sounds like you tried, but the reality is, is that Facebook is always going to be there lurking in the background. If you create a new account, they might be able to shut you down. And so it sounds like you've shifted into a little bit different direction and you know, you're, you're building some niche sites. So let's maybe talk about kind of, you know, all of that that happened, drop shipping, Facebook account, and why you decided to um, eventually sort of land on what you're doing now. Okay. Well, so the, the whole blogging thing then came, you know, I, I'd seen it at when I was looking into things I could do online. Right. And, and it was just a longer process and I, I didn't want to get into that. Um, right. and I was like, all right, drop shipping was, was seemed quicker. It's more immediate, the feedback loop on it. And, and then, then, you know, with Facebook shutting me down, um, I figured, okay, well, let's, let's go, let's try the blogging thing and affiliate marketing. And so that's when I got into that and, you know, um, that, so that was January. Um, it was the beginning of 2020. It runs, mm -hmm. yeah. It, it was more December, January timeframe. And then just got into that, started, you know, building websites on, on knowledge I had and, and stuff I wanted to talk about. And I was like, all right, well, I can build a personal site, you know, and personal brand. Um, and then just, it was January and then month after month, I just kept pub publishing, um, you know, every few days I would publish something. So all while working at the same time. And, and, and it was, I guess, April, May, I was like, all right, this is going to take forever because right. I wasn't getting much traction with, you know, search console, the search impressions or anything like that. And, and then I, I, as I started learning more and watching videos, you know, like watching your past videos, right. And why watching other guys. And, and then I was like, okay, the niche I'm in is, is really, really competitive. And I was like, all right, well, I can, I'm going to put that aside for now and, and try to figure another niche out. Right, something that's less competitive as I learn more and more. And then um, I think it was about the same time you guys had put up Motion Invest. 
um, what when did you guys put that up? It was like May, April, May um, time frame. Maybe you put it up put earlier. It up, yeah, we, we did put it up earlier. Um, it was towards the end of, um, it was like, I want to say September or October is really when we first, okay. 2019. But, you know, sometimes the yeah. word, you know, maybe we did a big um, relaunch or something in May. It's very possible that we did something like that. Oh, okay. Um, and so, I, I, it might have been because I, I think that was when you because you guys had a different business model back then. Um, yep. It was like a member business model, right? Yep. And it was when um, the membership um, model changed to yep. your current model. Yep. yep. And, and it was around that time. That that would have been right. Yeah. So so that's when I started. Um, I, I started, you know, learning about you know, oh, you could buy websites. All right, cool. You know, and, and so I started looking into it. I, I joined Facebook, a couple of Facebook groups is, um, that, you know, where people are always buying and selling and trading, not trading, but buying and selling. And then I, I went to yours, to your site, to Motion Invest. I went to Empire Flippers, Flippa, you know, FE International. I checked all those sites out and everything. And I was like, all right, well, maybe I could just buy a simple site you know, uh, um, and ha be out of the sandbox and, you know, it could, you know, accelerate things a little bit. Right. So that's when I went to motion invest and, yep. and you know, and so what, what ended up being the uh, site that you eventually bought in terms of why were you attracted to that deal that was listed on motion invest? What did you, what did you like about the listing and the site that you ended up buying? The, the primary thing was the price. Okay. Um, so it was a couple thousand and, mm -hmm. you know, I had tried to purchase ones before and I tried to do, you know, due diligence and everything, um, put a lot of time into that and trying to see is, is the niche, was the niche good or not. Um, and I lost opportunities because the price, the prices were lower. At, um, and so there were a couple thousand, 3000 and then I would lose out on those because they would sell really quick. So right. when this site came up that I purchased on Motion Invest, I was like, all right, 2000, it, the, the niche kind of makes sense. And I just purchased it, <laughs> you know, just like, went right for away. it, pulled the trigger. I just went for it. Um, How much money was, was like, it right. making, uh, the, the monthly I, income, do you recall? I think it was, I think it was making, um, it, it was in the teens after because it was per, it was after the um affiliate amazon affiliate cut their commissions oh yeah so mm -hmm. it, it was in the teens um with, with the max of like 20 or something 21 so like, or 22 like 20 bucks a month something like that yeah okay so, so it was like 20 bucks a month yeah. um so, so not a lot but it's gets your foot in the door right you've got a site yeah. that's already got traffic it's making a little bit of money yeah and, and yeah your, your, your guy was great. The, the guy who, um, the support staff who, who switched things over and handed things off to me was great. Um, we had a lot of back and forth and you know, it's funny cause when I got, when I finally got control of everything and I was like, all right, cool. Um, I'm going to get a lot of hits, clicks. Um, I'm going to be able to get the Amazon API on. Um, and, and this is all great. And then it was like crickets for three weeks. There was like no, there were like very limited Amazon clicks. Um, there would be days without Amazon clicks. Um, it was very strange. I was like, oh crap, did I get swindled? <laughs> did I get screwed? <laughs> um, but then it, it finally started, you know, people started finally clicking and everything. Um, and, and so I think that first, that first month it was like, eight dollars uh, of commissions and it was like the last that last uh week uh, of june i think it was um when finally made something right at least you were on the board a little bit yeah. um do you remember what the traffic was like you know in may and june roughly like how many visitors a month um was the site getting when you bought it um yeah, I could tell you. Uh, so that June, it had 900 visitors. Okay. 904. And July was 900, was just under 900. Okay. Uh, so yeah. 
I want to just kind of establish the baseline, right? You've got a site that's getting around 900 visitors a month. It's making maybe $20 a month, you know, made eight bucks the first sort of month that you had it. So it, it's pretty minimal, um, but it, I mean, it's there, it's got traction. Yeah. Um, it was out of the sandbox. That exactly. Was, that was a big thing for me. Out of the sandbox. And so what I want to do is actually skip ahead to how much is it making now? And then we're going to come back and we're going to fill in all the gaps of how you got it there. So give us the big picture of like, okay, this is how much it made last month and yeah. how much traffic it's, it's getting currently. So last month it made 6,800. That's um, insane. That's in November. Awesome. It made 8,600. Wow. Yeah. That's huge. Um, so a combination of, of, of Amazon and Ezoic. You know, yeah. Um, Ezoic ads. That's it was big. Phenomenal. And it's, it's, it's also, you know, product based too. So obviously that's why it sells well on Amazon. You know, products are usually in the, it could go up from 500 to 1300, um, like 300 to 1300 around there. Okay. Yeah. So a little bit higher um, price so point, higher price points at 3%, you know, right. Not too bad. Yeah. Not bad at all. I mean, congrats. I mean, that's huge to Thanks, take a yeah. site from June to, you know, what is that? Six months, roughly um, yeah. six, seven months, maybe of owning a site to making almost $7,000 a month, 6,800. Did you say uh, yeah. last month? That's, that's huge. Uh, listeners want to know, I want to know like how in the <laughs> world did you do that? I would love to be able to buy a site making $20 a month and, <laughs> And, you know, have it making almost seven grand after six months. So let's jump into uh, your exact steps. Like what's the first couple of things that you did initially after buying the site? So right after I bought it, um, you know, I, I noticed there were I, internal linking. That was the big one. Um, Link Whisper. Okay. You know, I, I purchased Link Whisper after I purchased the site uh, because I noticed there was no interlinking, you know between the pages and how many articles and were on the site when you bought it there were 30 32 okay and they were all articles. just essentially published yep. no internal linking between any yep. of the articles okay. i think they were like there were there were you know a handful here right. and there, but there right. was no real thought put into it okay um it didn't seem like there was thought put into it and when i did it i actually you know i before i purchased link whisper i tried to do it myself actually um, and then I just put it, you know, I would just throw it here. You know, there was no thought process, no organization into it. And it wasn't, a, it wasn't until I purchased Link Whisper that I got, you know, it, it became much easier and it was e easier to organize and everything. Right. Um, you can see the reporting, you can see how many articles, how many links they have and how they connect yeah. and everything like that. Yeah. Cool. So I, I made sure there were, you know, no orphans or anything. Um, that was the big thing. The content. You know, the English was good and it was all native English. Um, it was well written. Uh, I didn't do too much there. So the big things were, you know, the interlinking and then just continue. And then I just poured myself into the content. Just I wrote as much as I could in the same in the same, um, you know, I, I guess, format as the previous articles. Right. So, so I could stay consistent there and you know 32 i it's it has like 120 or so now oh wow so I've, i put up uh, about 90 over the course of you know the seven months i've had it and how much of those articles did you write yourself versus outsourcing i've written about initially it was all me um and then i i started outsourcing to fiverr um because I, I looked at Upwork and then it was just like, I don't feel like doing a gig. I don't feel like, you know, you know, creating a gig and, and then, you know, interviewing people. And I just, on Fiverr, I could just look at, you know, people who have written stuff, right? And, right. and just hire um, them, give them the job. And, and just hire and they them. They do yeah. it. Yeah. yeah exactly. Uh, but I made sure that the outlines and the briefs were, were all by me. So it was very, it was very structured, right? They're, they couldn't, it was difficult to go wrong. Um, and, and it was just, you know, basically just, you know, like Mad Libs, just fill in the blanks. Um, you just have to look up the information and then fill in the blanks. 
And so I think I put up um, maybe 20 or 30 that first month. And, and it, it just continued, you know, getting more and more hits, um, impressions. Um, and I, I think, and then it was, and then I was like, all right, so I'm stuck in this one niche and, but I, it, it could do so much more, you mm-hmm. know? And, and so that's when I did a, I, I re, I got a new domain and a brand really? new domain because okay. it was a, it was an exact match domain. Right. Okay. So um, like a specific it. product, very specific niche. Yeah. Originally. Okay. Yeah. So I, then I got a brandable domain and then I switched everything over, um, the beginning of August. So okay. less than two months in, I was like, <laughs> all right, <laughs> I'm, I'm sick of writing about this one, you know, this one niche, you know, so I wanted to expand and I did a 301 redirect and everything. And, and, I got all that traffic back by um, within like two or three weeks. Wow. Okay. Um, so, so it was, it was, you know, I, well. I guess I got lucky. Yeah. Uh, Cause I, I know the three on one redirects and everything could take, could sometimes, you know, really hurt me. So yeah, there's just uh, more opportunity to make mistakes, yeah. right? You know, Google maybe isn't crawling it as quickly as you would like, or there, yeah. anytime there's a big change, there's just a lot of opportunities for sort of uh, mistakes to be made. And so it sounds like you did it all properly that you got your traffic yeah. back. Um, so that's, that's huge. So uh, you're able to expand the, the niche, if you will, expand what the site is covering itself. And then it sounds like you just kept cranking out a bunch of content. Yeah. Yeah. And by that time I, I, I wrote very little. I still edited everything because um, mm-hmm. the writers I was I was getting, you know, they weren't they weren't the the best of the best or anything. So sure. I still made sure that um, I just put a lot of time into into editing the content, making sure you know the spelling, grammar, um, and then just optimize the content. Um, do you remember? Was, do you remember how much you paid for those fiber gigs for that content? It was between one and a half and three and a half cents. Okay. Um, so pretty so, inexpensive. Yeah. They were, they were, they were very cheap. Yeah. <laughs> um, and you know, they, they, I think they started out around two and a half, three and a half percent. Um, and then as I, you know, as I said, Hey, Hey, what if I give you 10, you know, 10,000 words and then they would lower it like a penny. Okay. You know? Wow. So, yeah. So I, I did, I just got it, you know, as much content as I could and, and kept doing it that way. So uh, what else did you do to the site SEO wise? Um, I mean, we already covered quite a bit. You did a lot of internal linking. You added a bunch of new content. Uh, you moved to a new domain. So it's more brandable. Was there anything yeah. else that you feel like worked well on page wise? Yeah. Um, well, on page, or just on site in general, just anything that you did on your own site that you feel like um, improved anything. Um, I, I think I made a lot of little things here and there, um, you know, but the interlinking and the content optimization were the big ones, um, you know, optimizing with, with um, surfer at the time I use phrase now. Um, and so just optimizing the content, making sure yeah. that, you know, looking at the SERPs and, and seeing who the top, the first page um, of results your competitors are and making sure that whatever you're putting out is better than what they're putting out, but in the same, in the same vein, right. In, in, in the same similar formats, um, similar, better information. Right. And so I, that's why I would spend, that's why I kind of stopped writing is because I spent, I realized I was spending so much time editing and, and optimizing that, you know, the first drafts of, of these things, I just wasn't getting to. And so that's why part of the, also part of the reason why I was like, all right, well, I'm not going to need to find expensive writers because I know in the end, I'm going to be doing everything. I'm going to be editing it and, and optimizing it as well. So these writers were more of a, you know, first draft writers, if you, if you will. Um, and they would just get to, they would get me to that first draft and then, and then I'll put it into surfer at the time and just optimize it. Okay. So I spent a lot of time doing that. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I know a lot of uh, listeners are usually curious about like the types of content that you're producing. Is it, was it a lot of, you know, product review type content, you know, or the best, you know, product, whatever, um, or informational, you know, what's kind of the breakdown of like, yeah. product versus informational? It, the first, the first 30 to 40 articles, I would say were, were all buyer and tank articles, um, whether it was best X for Y or, or X verse Y. Um, uh -huh. uh, it was all those. And so yeah. there were absolutely no informational articles on it okay. for the first, you know, the first 60, 70 articles total. And, and then I was like, huh, well, maybe I should throw up some informational articles. <laughs> and so <laughs> I, I threw up about 20 um, okay. informational articles. And, um, and then I threw, and then that's it in terms of informational. So I, I would say, so about 20 of them out of the 120. So one sixth of them are yeah. informational. The okay. rest are all buyer intent. Okay. And that yeah. seems to be working fine. I mean, Google appears yeah. to be, um, you know, ranking the site, you're making money. So, yeah. um, I just, I know people are always kind of curious of, of that, uh, approach. So what about link building off page stuff? Yep. Um, were you doing a ton of link building at the time? Is that, you know, something that's where that really I, helped? I think it really helped. Um, that's where it, it, it grew a lot faster is when I started link building. Okay. Um, and you know, with guest posts and everything. So I, I was, you know, I was very cautious in the beginning. I didn't want to, I didn't do any link building. Um, and it was growing still. Um, but then I was like, all right, well, I, I'm seeing what a lot of other guys are talking about and, and, you know, especially Matt Diggity and when he was, you know, his, he's got this whole backlink blueprint, right. For yep. when you start a site. And so I was looking at that and I was like, all right, um, well, I, oh, the other thing I did was the, and I, I built, you know, a lot of the social media, um, accounts. So okay. I, I did a, oh, I, on page actually. Now I, um, I'm going there. Social persona, um, a persona. I put a, I put a persona on, on, on there. So that maybe helped with EAT and stuff. Um, right. Okay. And then I made, you know, a Facebook account. Um, well, no, I didn't, I made a Facebook page. Um, right. Then I, for, for the site, I made, uh, you know, Twitter, Pinterest, Instagram accounts. Um, I even made a LinkedIn account for, for the persona. Okay. You know? um, all right. So I, I did all that to, for authority, right. Yeah. For EAT. And I, I think all of that, you know, helped as well, even if a little bit and, but link building definitely helped, you know, I started out, I was like, all right, well, links are expensive. So purchased a couple. I was like, all right, well, it seems like it's, it's going up a little bit. Um, and then I just started, you know, doing my own outreach with Haro and seeing, um, looking for certain articles that would tie into the niche that I'm in mm -hmm. and try to contact them for, you know, it's like, Hey, I wrote this, you're linking to this. And I wrote this great other great article, you know, um, that's even better. And it's more updated. It's more mm -hmm. current, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and, I think the, the, the ratio was really bad on those. Um, but, right. <laughs> um, and then now I'm using, um, niche website builders, to, uh, oh, their, okay. shotgun, their skyscraper shotgun, um, right. Shot, shotgun skyscraper, um, you yep. know, so they, they've been great, you know, building lots of links every month, um, to, to the article that they created. Yeah. yeah. So that, but that's really where things started to take off. Um, it is when I started getting a lot more links pointing to the site and so, then Google started seeing it. Yeah. So if somebody were in your position, they've got a site, they've got a bunch of content that they've added recently, but they haven't really done any link building. Now that it sounds like you've tried several things, where would you recommend that they start link building? I, I'd say start with Haro because you know, the, the success with Haro initially was, it was, it took a while to get going. Um, but then as I did more, um, it, 
then I was starting, wow, a, a DR of 50, a DR of 60, you know, we, we, they were coming in and they were linking to me. And then um, all I had to do was go through the Haro emails every day or, you know, three, four times a day mm-hmm. and, and then look for whatever, you know, fit. And it's not every day I, w- I would find something at all. It would, right. it would be like maybe two a week I would find something. Okay. Um, but then the other part was just outreach. And, and before you go on to that with, with Haro, um, I'm just kind of curious what your success rate was there. You know, if you were doing submitting like two, um, you know, pieces of content, you're responding to two requests a week. Yeah. How many I, of those actually ended up into to links? Do you I actually think? haven't gotten them. I've gotten to that site. I've gotten three, three in the last like three months. Okay. So it's one not a lot. So it's not a lot. If I'm yeah, because one out of eight, then you know. Um, okay. So it's not a high ratio at all, but it's they're usually good dr. Right. Right. Um, I, I usually avoid the like uh, if you go on, if you look on the Haro emails, there's a lot where they're just affiliate sites, you know. Hmm. Um, so I just avoid those. They'll because what they're asking for are, hey, what are your you know tell me a best you know, what, what's the best X for Y? Tell me your product, you know, and tell me what you think the best X is. And Mm -hmm. and they're easy to see, right? They're just affiliate sites and they want, what they want is to, they'll, they'll link out to you still, but then they also are hoping that you're going to link back to them. Right. 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 So it makes sense. You know, I haven't tried it. I haven't tried it yet, but I like that. And I I don't know if I have time, maybe down the road, I'll try that. Right. Yeah. (laughs) But I I just avoid those. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I I usually go for the bigger, um, you can usually tell, you can look at, you can look up the, you know, the, the media that is asking for the things. Right. Yeah. Okay. So that's a good place to start is maybe Haro and then um, maybe doing some of your own outreach. It sounds like um, to yeah. either get guest posts or, or other links. Yeah. Um, but I, it, it wasn't until I, I really, um, I was like, I, I spent, I spent so, I started realizing that I spent so much time trying to link build that to build links that it was, it was just, it wasn't as fruitful as just, I was like, all right, well, I'm making some money now, but it, it still wasn't enough to, to cover like a niche website builder. So I was like that first month I was just like, all right, well, I'm just going to bite the bullet and, mm-hmm. and, you know, um, pay for it and see what happens. Yeah. And, um, and then, you know, it just worked out well, you know? Yeah. And so how many months have you been with niche website builders now? This is the third month of outreach. So the first okay. month is always the the content, right? Right. Um, and then three months is the typical campaign of outreach. So I'm in the third month right now. Okay. So I'm trying to decide right now if I continue with this site or continue with another site, you know, mm-hmm. go to another site um, with the, with it or just stop and, and try something else. Yeah. That's another thing I'm, I'm thinking about doing is, um, is, is just pouring all that money into content and getting more content. Right. So, um, for listeners that, that maybe don't know is that this isn't the only site that you now own and operate. You actually went out and bought a second site and you've yeah. grown that really well. Uh, also, why don't you just give us the really highlight details, you know, maybe how much you bought it for, how much it's making now and how long it's been. So it was around, it was, a, it was at the same time actually. Okay. Um, and so it, I purchased it on, on flipping websites. I think it was the Facebook group. Um, right. and it was a, it was five month old, six month old site. Um, the posts that were put up, there were nine posts on it. It was that were put up in January, February. Hmm. Um, I purchased it for, I 50. Um, but that okay. was like two sites. So they had, a, they, they were like, all right, well, here's a throw in. <laughs> so <laughs> a little bonus for you if you buy yeah. now. So I was like, all right, fine. Um, so I purchased two sites for 150. The other site I just have not touched because of right. the, what I had to go through for this site, you know? Um, so the, 
this site after I was, I was still, you know, I still didn't know what I didn't know. Um, I was like, all right, cool. It's a, it's a micro niche. And, um, I I figured, all right, let's give it a shot. Let's see what, what happens. Um, I purchased it and then I was like, all right, so many issues with it. It was on, you know, it was using thrive architect. Um, but then I was like, all right, well, I don't want to pay for thrive and they didn't give me thrive at the time um, with it. So I had to, that was one thing. Um, I had to change the theme and, and redo a lot of that. And then as I, as I started getting into the, the um, content, I was like, wow, this is really poorly written, you know? Um, and it actually got hit by the May the 4th update. Right. Um, so it was, it was getting like between two to 300 impressions on, on Search Console. So just mm-hmm. impressions on right. Search Console. And then it went down to like, 50 impressions and at the time he, he actually shared with me the google search console on screenshot and i was like and i, and I didn't think about it you know at the time because i didn't i actually didn't know there was a there was a google update oh um, really um, wow and that's where that's what i didn't know what i didn't know right you know? And, and so when i purchased it i was like all right well what i'm going to do first is i took a couple a couple posts um one was a pillow post and one was just more of a, another product post, a product review post. I redid those and it, it took me three to four days to do those because um, wow. they were that poorly written and, and I just optimized them and everything with Surfer. Um, and then they immediately within the, within like two days um, started getting more impressions, you know, and then that's when I went through the other articles and then made sure of the whole, the same thing, the interlinking and everything. Um, and then I just let those nine sit there for, for a few months, okay, for a couple months, a couple more months. And it, it just kept growing and growing and it was actually getting sales. Um, you know, it was actually doing better um, than, than the motion invest site. Just because it, it was it was a micro niche, I guess, um, and and people were it, it was a growing trend, and that was one thing, is I saw I put it into Google Trends and I saw that it was growing, right? It's a growing yeah. micro niche, and, and so I was like, all right, cool, um, and that was I think that was the main thing that had that it had going for it, because um, it had like no traffic. Um, the first month I had it, let me see, it had 167 visitors. Wow, July was 239, you know, um, now it's December was just under 15,000. Wow. That's yeah. uh, so yeah, essentially went from making almost nothing. It sounds like, um, very yeah. little to now what's the most recent month that this site has made. Um, this month, this in, in December, it was 4,200. Wow. Yeah, and from zero to 4,200. Not, not too shabby. Not too shabby at all, I'd say. <laughs> uh, you've built a portfolio now that's over $10,000 a month. Yeah, and I just hit my really, first 10000 in profit. Congratulations profit. Thanks. Uh, for yeah. doing that. Doing that in a matter of about six months is both incredibly unusual and yeah. very impressive. So, uh, congrats on doing that. Um, you know, it's kind of a lot of well, work. <laughs> it's a lot of work, no doubt. And so I yeah. know, yeah, it's easy for us to talk about all the things you did. You know, you built all the internal links and you added content, but it is, I mean, it's, at the end of the day, it's just kind of a slog, isn't it? I mean, you, yeah. you have to put in the time, you have to put in the work and, um, sometimes you get better results than others, but you clearly have done very well on these two sites. Yeah, this, this site, I'm really, you know, I'm, I'm really thinking about the reason I haven't done much in terms of like adding posts or anything I've added, you know, there, there's, I added 20 very short form informational articles, um, the, the beginning of the month, uh, well, the end of last month and, and, and previous to that, I mean, I, I added five or six articles. Um, and they're all product articles, they're all best, best X for Y's. Hmm. Uh, and, it, but those, because they were within the niche, they, 
you know, within like a week, they were all writing and taught on the first page. Um, so my little DR site, you know, of like five or six, um, it, it, it was like beating out the big boys in the, in the game. Yeah. I, and it's funny cause I, I didn't build any links to that, um, until, until last month and it was, it was doing all that, you know, I, so I, I credit it to content and, and interlinking cause I didn't do any other external linking to it. Right. So what are your plans for these couple of sites? Do you just plan on kind of holding on to them, building out a bigger portfolio? Do you want to flip? Do you want to do something else? I've been thinking about that actually. I've been, I think I want to, eventually I'll flip them. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's, it's like, it's had two months of success in turn. And obviously because of the holidays partly too as well. Sure. Right. November, November and December. And I do, you know, be nice to flip one of them um to get a you know a, a good chunk of cash and then um take some money off the table and and um I, i'm gonna i, I do want to build a portfolio of sites so i'm, I'm starting a, i'm gonna start another one <clears throat> um and i guess i'm starting it from scratch because i couldn't find a small site that i i wanted to you know what is it called i wanted to repeat the magic you know uh, sure. of the second site and yeah. buy something and buy like a little starter site and um and that was out of the sandbox and, and use that but i just kind of found one yet in the niche that i wanted to pursue so you know uh this pursuits <laughs> <That's> <laughs> um right. and, and so I'm, I'm, I'm i have my you know started to outsource that content you know right now as well and, and for that new site. So okay. we'll see how that goes, but I do want to, you know, we'll see how it goes. Um, do you actually, do you think, cause it's only had two months of, you know, of good revenue, right? Do you think I would, I'm, I'm thinking that I need a little, like maybe six more months, six months of consistency, right? And, and consistent returns and everything before I can actually really get into the idea of, you know, selling it. Do you yeah. think that I should just wait? Uh, that would be ideal. I mean, the longer track record that you have at a higher earning level, you can expect to get a higher, you know, sales price. Uh, typically, yeah. you know, people are going to want to see about six months um, yeah. of, you know, sort of a track record. Um, obviously, longer is better. Uh, yeah. But but some of these, you know, smaller sites, people can clearly see that they're growing quickly. And so even if you have three or four months. Um, depending on the buyer, you know, they may be super excited. They see the growth and, you know, they may be willing to pick it up, but, um, usually a site will be valued on sort of average revenue of the past six months yeah, right? or 12 months yeah. even. But in your case, I'm sure they would still probably want to say, eh, I want to look at the last six months and average that out. So, yeah. So if you could sustain, yeah, at least a couple more months, that would, the average would go up significantly yeah, for sure. Exactly. That's what I figured. So yeah. I'm just going to keep working on them. You know, um, that second one, I'm trying, I'm still trying to figure out what to do with it. Cause it's a, it's a micro niche and I've, I've covered a good, you know, 80% of that niche already. <laughs> um, yeah. so I'm just trying to figure out what to do with it, you know? Um, cause I'm looking at some of the other sites on it. The, the big competitors are, are, you know, are the big boys, like the, like the wire cutters and that, that, that type of where they just cut Tom's guide, where they just cover everything. Right. right? Um, and then the ones who are niche specific are, they have like 30 posts, 40 posts. So it's the same thing, you know, as, as me. And I think that's what helped as well. The, the niche. Yep. Yeah. It very well could be that all your content is very laser focused on this one specific niche. And I do think Google kind of values that a little bit, right? Yeah. That you're kind of the authority on this, you know, very specific niche. And so, uh, yeah, it, it'll be interesting to see what you do. I mean, maybe, uh, the right decision is to just, you know, build it a little bit and then, you know, sell it yeah. later in the year. I don't know. Um, there's nothing wrong with doing that, right? It's, it's, uh, hopefully good to have options. Um, so, yeah. uh, maybe final question here is just, are there any other tips that you might have for somebody interested in buying 
and growing websites or just anything else that you feel like uh, you did on these sites that we didn't cover yet? Um, I'd, I'd say focus on content, um, focus on, on interlinking. Um, those are, those can be free, right? In, in the sense that they're just your time that you put into it. Um, I feel that the content optimization is what really drove things along with the interlinking. Um, because that second site, I didn't build any links to it. And, and it, it was, you know, that, that grew quickly. Um, as well as, as the first site, um, the motion of this site, it was the same thing. Yeah. Um, that's a more competitive niche. So it needed the link building to really give it a big boost. Um, but with the second site, um, it, it, I, I just put everything in the content, um, and, and you know, LinkedIn. Yeah. I focus on that. Spend the time there. That's awesome. Yeah. Great advice. I agree. Um, that, uh, that's, I mean, that's a, a lot what I focus on my sites, right. Is, is trying to optimize on page, getting sort of the, the most out of the money that I've already invested in content, yeah. right, is optimizing the article itself, optimizing the links, uh, internal links, that sort of thing. And so I just want to say thanks again for coming on the Niche Pursuits podcast, sharing your oh, story. You. Yeah, it's uh, great to hear, not, not just because, you know, you bought a site on Motion Invest, which that's awesome, but you also bought a site somewhere else, right, and found a great deal and have grown that site as well. So sort of, uh, I feel like you had lightning strike twice uh, for you yeah. maybe here in, in 2020. So uh, best of luck in 2021. Hopefully Thank you, you keep growing those sites and, and maybe some new ones. Oh, one last thing for yeah. everyone out there. Um, I just wanna say Spencer's got some great YouTube videos from three to four years ago. All those coaching calls that you did, those are great um, because when I, when I first started out, I would actually listen to those, right? Where you took, you took your, your students from right. beginning to end, you know? And they're, even though they're three, four years old, they're still relevant, you know? It's like finding a niche, finding low, you know, low competition keywords and everything, you know, all the way to creating a brand, you know, for the site. Yeah, no, thank so you. I'm, definitely I'm... Go, definitely go, go, wa go watch those and listen to those. Yeah, no, thanks. Uh, glad you found those helpful. Um, that that was for Niche Site Project 3. Um, I was co coaching uh, Samara, and so I did coaching yeah, calls yeah. with her. Uh, every little detail we pretty much covered. Yeah. Uh, and so, yeah, you can head over to the YouTube channel. You can do a search for Niche Site Project 3 or coaching calls, uh, and those will definitely pull up. Or you can go over to nichepursuits.com, and uh, up in my menu, I have case studies and projects and it's niche site project three. You can get a list of the entire project there as well. So cool. That's cool. Uh, glad to hear that those uh, were helpful as well. So, um, but yeah, yeah, once again, uh, Yao Yao, thanks for coming on the niche pursuits podcast thanks, and Spencer. sharing your story. Yeah. Thank you, Spencer. Loved it. All right. Thanks again, everybody. Right. And appreciate you listening in.